percent returns. They don't need to. Uh, their main investors are pension funds, uh, sovereign wealth funds, and uh, other institutions. So basically, their investors just want a 10% return every year. So their goal is to make 1% a month. So they're really going to go from, and it's across the board. That's why you don't see a lot of notes on any of these pools that are over $150,000, uh, because the bigger hedge funds will not sell those or not get rid of them, because they're, they're considered less risky. As far as the tape is concerned, you'll be wiping out sections? Wiping out no. sections? If needed. We, Why? for the pri you sign a non-disclosure agreement. So okay, so that's good. Out. I yeah, just want to make sure who the yeah. audience was. So, so, this, this, so my next this question. This video is just for this room okay. and the rest of our group. So we're, that's all we're going to be sending it out. That's good. Yeah. So um, your company, you're about what, 20 million, 50 million? No, 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 no. we don't, <laughs> we're not even close to that. Oh, okay. No, no, this is our only, this is our only investment outside of my own personal investments. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, this, this whole group has, I don't know, about 430? 450. 450. Um, okay. It's so about 450K? Know, in, in investments, yeah. Oh, okay. And we've put out uh, roughly about 100, 160. 160 out, and then, uh, and then we, we just and put we two And we just bids. put two bids on uh, two non-performing notes. Yeah, so we'll be, if we get those, we'll probably be about halfway invested. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the majority <coughs> of business is uh, doing this and, and the note sales, so. Which, uh, can you say which ones you, you put the bids on? Those we, on the oh, tape yeah. You sent on the phone. Of course. Yeah, yeah they're actually on the tape that you guys were looking at. Right, yeah. I was wondering which ones they... Like, we will. We're going to go through that tape. We'll go that later. Yeah. Yes, we're going through the whole tape. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So, um, 2A. This is where we start getting into note parameters. Uh, this here is a worksheet. It's a blank worksheet. We've got one filled out in here for the group, kind of meeting our requirements that we want to look at. Uh, one of the hardest things getting into notes is figuring out what do you want to buy. And you need a set of guidelines, because once you start getting into a tape, you're going to get lost. Uh, you're going to be looking at everything. Uh, the last tape we sent out was, what, 400 lines on it? 500 lines. And, you know, in, in 15 minutes, that list is down to 12. If you know what you're looking for before you start. If you know, you're going to be all over the place. So we'll go through sorting the tape later in the program okay. and walk you through the steps that we use to get rid of the stuff that don't meet our parameters. So this is a form in here, and it's a quick form. It's set up blank on a separate sheet now, so you can print it out, you can check it, use it as you're brainstorming. Okay? okay? Yep. Now, 2B, section 2B, this one is filled out based on what we're looking for in our program. And we are, we've got some basic guidelines so that we can narrow our take. Because we're looking kind of conservative on our product because we're dealing with everybody's money. And, we're, and this is how we want to start and that. It isn't about super returns and taking a lot of risk. It's about learning this process and walking away with money in your pocket at the end of the day. Okay. I have a question about that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, states to avoid. Why do you have Maryland and D.C.? Mm -hmm. uh, Maryland changed their laws in April on their foreclosure process and doubled the time and probably doubled the cost. They've got a lot more notifications that are required and have to go out when you're dealing with the foreclosure laws. And that's just a new change. The ch the Actually, in Maryland's foreclosure laws on the website, the website hasn't been updated. They're saying you can foreclose in like 60 days in Maryland. Okay. It's, it's it's out two to three times that at this point, uh, particularly since all the rules came out just in April. Uh, people don't know exactly what they're doing, so it's changed. So we're staying away from Maryland. Plus, it's uh, judicial state also. Correct. And uh, the wait, now I thought Maryland, Maryland was both. <laughs> uh, it could be. Go go to the website. Okay. <coughs> You'd notice mid Maryland foreclosures, I track foreclosures, and um, mm -hmm. they have really increased. I mean, if you go to like Samuel White's website, mm -hmm. I mean, no, you'll see four, and dozens, yeah. four in Fairfax County, and you'll see 
30 in, in Prince George's County. I mean, they've really, in the past six months. Oh, right. And D.C. is having their um, moratorium that's um, going away. Yeah, it's going to be industry. Yeah. yeah. So I've heard from February to June. So, so I actually know somebody that's on, that uh, is an attorney that knows a person on the board uh, for the foreclosure moratorium board. So basically, D.C. is the only place in the country where they actually have a board that tells you whether you can foreclose on somebody or not. Um, and they, they, it's not really a moratorium. They could choose to let you foreclose, but they don't. It, for the last three, four years, they said we're not foreclosing. Uh, the, the latest update is that it's going to be June of this year that they're going to um, That's what I've heard. sort of dissolve the board. The, mm -hmm. It's not going to dissolve the board. They're always going to have a board. Mm -hmm. um, but they're going to basically open up the floodgates and say. Gotcha. And I've heard D.C. has five to 6,000 that are in limbo right now. Yeah, waiting, waiting. something like that. I, I, have four, I heard four to five. So, I mean, it's yeah. probably somewhere around there. Um, but, yeah, it's going to, I mean, part of our starting this private money lending group is to really jump on that. Um, so, yeah, any, any questions about that? Just let me know. Okay, so any other questions on the states and that? That was perfect. Okay, so we just found a, a variety of states have real issues with, so we want to want to avoid them. Um, there are other states that can make it difficult, but these let's just get these off the list immediately because we're not going there. What was your What's the reason behind Florida? I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's very easy. For, for Florida, Florida, the foreclosure takes a year to do. Okay. Um, and and also. Um, it costs a lot more. Like, not not only does it cost more, but Florida is one of those states where I, I call it like a boom state. You know, if something goes wrong with the economy, those notes are going to go down, or that value is going to go down substantially. You know, they they were the hardest hit during the crisis. You know, if you look at the Florida real estate and and California, Florida, California, Nevada, and Arizona. I mean, they literally go straight up and then go straight down. Straight up and straight down <coughs> every ten years. So we tried to avoid Florida for that very reason. Okay. Florida was up two years not long ago for a foreclosure because they run it have to run it through the court system and they didn't have enough judges. So they actually started bringing judges out of retirement to get things scheduled sooner mm -hmm. because it could take it take a year just to get a court date. And by the way, Florida is one of those areas where every single homeowner is a scam artist. <laughs> Literally. Like, well, basically everybody in Florida is scam artists. They all, because they all came from New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's, New there's, there's, like, there's only like two or three major industries in Florida. It's like real estate and tourism and insurance. You know. The insurance bill. No. Yeah. Lawyers. Well, and lawyers. You, you know, lawyers. you don't need the homeowner to be. But every, every an type expert of fraud in this country, or, but Medicaid the lawyers fraud, train them. you know, yeah. dr drug fraud, all this. It's all, it all starts in Florida. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. No. Okay. And where? Uh, I have another question dealing Sorry. with your criteria. Sure. <coughs> all the criteria. On the top, you're looking basically at it's one to four it's units. Not, it's not. <laughs> Pardon me? You're looking at, you have single family homes, townhouses, right. condos. So no land, no commercial, mm -hmm. basically one to four units. Well, we're talking single family, no, single, residential, single family. Only. all residential single family is all we're looking for this group to okay. invest in. Now, future and other groups, yes, we could expand, but we had to set up a certain investment criteria within okay. our prospectus and our bylaws, and in doing so, we set certain parameters. So that's where we're going to, that's where we're focusing. In the future, there's going to be a lot more expansion and things available, but we needed to start. You got to crawl before you. Work. Understand. I, I wouldn't, even, but I wouldn't even do multifamily. I mean, multifamily is a totally different business mm -hmm. from single family because then you're dealing with multiple headaches versus one. I like being in a single family so that I know who I'm dealing with. You know, multiple family, it's hard to get in touch with these people if, if the note's been defaulted. They can have their relatives living there. It's just a whole nother mess. And that's and why. I, I, yeah. That's and why I agree I, with you. Yeah. And I was looking from a perspective also of private lending. For, for, well, private lending, for. you're dealing with, with one landlord, so yes. it's a little yeah. different. But The, the multifamily okay. thing, too, is, is we want to, we have a time frame within the investment fund, so we want to get product in, we want to move it, we want to work it out, and then we need to sell it. 
people buying one to four, you know, two to three, four unit, unit that's a smaller buying base. Mm -hmm. Everybody will buy single family. So it gives us a larger market to resell to. That makes sense. I want it with you. Also, the market for the single family homes is the one that's more viable right now this, than the commercial. This is buying. Yeah. Well, well, not only buying, but the pricing is yeah. better. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to jump to section three, uh, reviewing a tape. Um, I went in and uh, rewrote a lot of this from your original documentation. Um, we've got our information on narrowing the list, and I'm actually going to, uh, we put some of our own parameters into the narrowing the list. You would change those parameters based on your risk factors and what you want to do when you're looking for your own private purchase. So we're going to kind of just skim through this because one of the things we're going to do is we're going to actually pull up the tape and I'm going to break it down and do the initial breakdown to reduce it. Okay. Okay. So should we basically go with these attachments, these new yes. attachments? Yes. Everything before and is outdated. Okay. Can I just add one thing on this step one? So when you break down the, the one thing that we didn't put up but I always look at um, is when you look at these houses and you look at the photos in them, a lot of them, for instance, um, the, the note that we just uh, made a bit on in, in Indiana, that uh, on Google Drive, the, the photos from uh, September or, or October of 2013, right? You know, the one thing that you always want to look at is you want to look at how the house is presented, right? If there's a glossy finish on it, that means that somebody spent money to get a more expensive paint. If there's a car that's worth over $15,000 in the driveway, that means that those people are paying on that car. Otherwise, it would have been repoed, right? You know, if you're looking at uh, sometimes people in these in these photos, they'll have, uh, you know, for instance, the Indiana one, it has all these, like, really nice planted flowers out front. You know somebody's taking care of that house. These are the things that you have to look at that most people don't look at. You know, I've seen houses that, look like dumps, but they have $30,000 cars in the driveway, right? Maybe they treat the car, maybe they treat the house like crap, but they have money. They're, they're spending it on something. Mm -hmm. So that that's what you have to think of. And, you know, eventually as we buy these notes, we're also going to do credit uh, checks on these these people. The one thing that, that sucks about first liens is that um, you can't do a credit check unless you own the, own the notes itself physically. Um, it's a little different with seconds. Um, you know, the sellers out there do provide credit reports with seconds, but that's because it's more finance focused. It's not, you're not taking over a property, you're taking over real debt. Uh, but even that's skirting the laws. Like, don't ever try to check a credit on somebody because that person could sue you um, for privacy laws. So, just want to throw that out. Until you own them. Emotional equity. When you see the rose bushes trimmed yes, and the lawn good. manicured, you know that somebody is probably there. They haven't been able to work with the banks because the, work ha the banks have not been willing to work with them. But they are taking care of the house and they do want to stay there. Yes. Yeah. So the, yeah, the emotional equity is very important. The thing on a credit check is, yeah, there are statements in here about a credit check that you have to own the note get the credit check. Sometimes in the collateral documentation that you receive when the loan was originated, there will be a copy of a credit report in that. So you, you can you can swing through. It may not be current, but at least it gives you a basis to start with. Uh, but uh, it's not always available in the, in the market that we're looking for. Okay. Um, Pulling up site information, I have a number of websites available here that we use for the Which different... document is this one? Pardon me? Which one? This is one this? is uh, Section 3, Reviewing a Tape. And it's a matter of finding out which ones you're more comfortable with um, to use. And I always check pricing of a property and do my research on at least two different sites. Um, Ian uses different sites than I do, so we actually, when we're before we bid, I do it my value, and I'm very conservative, and then Ian does his values, and then we have a discussion about it. So on the tape we just put out, we were looking at four different nodes, and on two of them, we were right on solid, exactly online with each other. On 
One, we found high crime area, had concerns, we both agreed. Third one, we were back and forth a little on the value. So that's the way Ian and I work. We bounce it off each other as a way, because we look at things differently. But it's always good. Always check a couple resources on the pricing, because we all know that they all vary from one to the other. Now, Ian, you were saying that with Google Earth, yeah. How recent is Google Earth? That's about two no, years. No, no, it's so. Google. It's not Google. It's Google. Google Maps. If you, when you do Street View, you can look on the bottom left, and it'll tell you the date that they took that picture. So, for us, that's that's important because if they took it a month ago, that means we're not going to have to go out and spend fifty dollars to pay somebody to, to to take pictures of it, um, unless it's been you know hit by a hurricane in the last month. <laughs> But yeah, something that's three or four years old. Or a fire. I, I've seen a lot of that where it's old, old pictures. Yes. And you know, so you look at the old picture, but now you may still put a bid on the property, but during your, do, while you're, they're pulling, the, you're agreeing on the price and then you're doing the collective documents, your collateral documentation, you then pay the $50 and have a current drive-by. We're talking agent into it, maybe in the local area to do mm -hmm. it for you. I've noticed. On one, I think that the one I sent from you that I'd gotten from Scott Carson, yes. sifting through that, and one, I was at Street View, you see one view, and I've experienced other places, so I have two or three sites that I use, mm -hmm. like a Street View, but then also from above, as you zoom in, I've seen where the picture actually changes. So, like I said, in, my, in this case, the higher one was more recent, mm -hmm. and um, uh, also if you go to... Uh, Home Snap, I think, gives you the bird's eye, and that's almost always a different picture than you see from Google. And you okay. can see from different angles, and you can spin it around. But one, I went, it was in Louisiana, um, where at one view, there was a house there, and another view, the house was gone. Bulldozed. <laughs> gone. It was yeah. not there anymore. <laughs> well, one of the ones on the, the tape we just reviewed, right. and I forget which one it was, Oops. but mm -hmm. it, it Google, the Google address pointed you to a house, which was not the house. Right. When I went up the street, it was the house that was on the tape was actually two houses up, and the mailbox was clearly marked with the address. <coughs> so, so, yeah, not always was right that, that exactly. Exactly. So, North Carolina. so what you have to do on, on Google, uh, Google Maps with these pictures is if you look at the, um, like right at the end of the driveway, usually to the right, there's a little piece, of, a little white thing with a number on it. Yeah. That, that's usually the address. So sometimes you won't be able to see the actual number on the house. So always look down at the bottom of the, of the driveway to the right for a little white patch. Most municipalities do it now. Um, and also for Louisiana, uh, Louisiana is one of those states that you have to be very, very careful with. Um, a house could look great, and then you go on and do, do, no, no, you do the demographics, Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's like poverty rate is 35%. Right. That, that's the one state that I always constantly see where, I mean, crime and poverty rate is sky high. I don't know why, but, you know, it's definitely uh, one of those states. How do you, what's the, and this might have been covered in a previous uh, sure. meeting, yeah. but when you pull it up and there's not a picture, yep. what are, you, are you assuming it's too rural or what, what's so, your... So when, it, when I put, there's two things. Uh, if you pull it up and, and there's no picture, you, you would assume that it's rural right off the bat. Um, but number two is not all, uh, you know, for what we're using, first of all, Google hasn't taken a picture of every single house in the country. So sometimes it's just not a picture yet. Mm -hmm. um, and second of all, uh, they, places like Zillow and Trulia, like those types of websites, they get their, all their information from public record. So if it's not on public record, it's not going to show up on, on, on the internet. You have to literally go and, uh, I mean, you could do Google Earth. Google Earth, you put in the coordinates so that, you know, you could definitely see on top. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's just some houses out there that just aren't yeah. in public record. Okay. So. I but personally move on. At this point, yeah, you just move on at the initial oh, right. oh, stage. I'll just sit up here. Um, no. That's what I've been no. doing. Yeah. But it's, it's, there's a lot of notes to go through. Yeah. And if there's no picture, yeah. I'm, I'm going to the next one. Um, I'm not going to take. My, I'm not going to try to figure something out. Uh, yeah. I, I think you know when you first start evaluating these, these tapes, you have a tendency to really 
try to dig into as much detail, and you, you wind up spending like all this time. That's, and that's as you analysis get, paralysis. Yeah, well, and, as, and as you get through and you learn a little bit more and you do a little bit more, you realize that you just need to do go through these steps and you just need to do it quickly and you just need to move on, like you said. Just you don't see a picture, you move on. So for, for, those, you know. for those 40 notes that he sent to, sent to me that were like the ones that we broke down from non-bacon or whatever, I did those 40 notes in less than an hour. Yeah. So basically when I'm, when I'm going on, on, my most important thing to me at least is the first thing I do is I want to see a picture of the house. Mm -hmm. If it looks anything like a dump, I'm just moving on. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to deal with the headache, especially since we're being conservative in this group. There are some notes that I will see that I'll be like, I would do it myself Maybe. personally, yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't do it for this group. So look at the picture. If it looks like a dump, if it looks like a place that you would not live in yourself, it's not right for this group. Uh, and then, you know, right after that, I just go straight to the pricing. And if a, a lot of times now, what, what sellers are starting to do is they want to, they're going to put their own price on the on the, the pool. So for this pool, they put the fair market value. Um, you know, if you see in your first five, four or five uh, notes that they're somewhat on track, mm -hmm. then you don't have to go dig as deep. You just sort of, you get down to the four or five notes you're interested in, then you do the pricing. But you don't want to waste time. You really just want to get through. You want to just get a feel for the note, get a feel for the last time the person paid, um, and just keep on going through. Because there's going to be pools that are going to be three, 400 notes. I mean, this one was. It's just most of them were seconds, because mm -hmm. it comes from a second seller. Um, what, what do you, when you look at when the last payment was made, what do you decide about that? So I only want to buy notes where they haven't paid in two years or less. Uh, and we were just talking about this before. Um, I'm sure most of you guys know Vincent Kisti. Some people here know him, I think. Uh, well, anyways, he, he's he's a guy. He's a note buyer down here. Um, you know, and and basically, he was actually in a couple of our. He he in our first planning meetings when yeah. we first started our group, he attended. Yeah. Well, Vincent well, Christie. Very tall. Yeah. Yes, very, very tall. And um, he's. I've gone with him to the Allen Cowgill raising private money seminars. Uh, he's also an Eddie Speed student, so and he's also a uh, in a mentoring program with PPR, which is a hedge fund that focuses a lot on seconds. Mm -hmm. So uh, he just, uh, you know, I had yeah. I had breakfast with him this morning before here, and we were talking about some things. Uh, you know, that's what you're bringing up. Yeah, that's what I was bringing up. The, the fact that, uh, that certain years, certain states, a lot of the states have time frames. If a loan has not been actively worked to reinstate it or collect on it over a period of years, the loan is considered void. Ooh, whoa. Wow. And that note, it, it varies in states anywhere. The, the, the least one, I think, is about three years. The average is somewhere between four and ten years. So as owning a mortgage, if, there, if there's been no activity on that and no one's tried to collect it, for the, in that window, depending upon your state, it's unsecured, they, right? it's an, it becomes an unsecured debt and no longer attached to the property. It's just simply a debt of the homeowner, and you can no longer go after the property. So anything that you see that they haven't paid since 2007, 2008, you want to stay with. So you're looking at the last payment date, <clears throat> less than two years? Yes. We look at the last payment date. I'll stretch it a little farther, but also, if somebody in the chain on the note attempted to collect, it restarts the clock. That, not that they actually collected, but at least there was an attempt to collect. It's from their last type of contact is where it works. And you have to be careful with that, too, because uh, so there, there's one major company that's, that owns most of the notes in this country, uh, and that's Aquin Financial. Yeah. Um, and basically, I mean, you'll see it on most of the, most of the, the, the pools, and, and basically, all the notes that are coming on uh, balances of under $100,000, those notes have not been touched in three or four years. Um, basically, Aquin bought them as a bulk as part of a, a, a more than a billion dollar purchase last year, and that's what's flooding the market now. So those are very, very risky. A lot of the whole Scott Carson tape was, was Aquin. Uh, so that's stuff that you really, really have to look, look after. And then, just so you know, anybody that the thing that scares me about some of these notes is any notes that are under on houses under thirty thousand dollars. Just keep in mind that those people. I mean, 
probably half of them are in government assistance of some kind. Um, and they know all the tricks of the trade to keep themselves in a house for free forever. So that's one of the main reasons why I don't like those types of notes and why I, I wouldn't let our group buy them. Uh, and the other part is, if somebody has $30,000, remember, how do you think they're treating their house if they don't have enough money to buy a fifty, hundred thousand dollars house? They probably don't have a lot of money to upkeep the house. So those, those are going to be the ones where you walk in and it looks like a, you know, bomb hit it and uh, everything's 40, 50 years old. Another reason why we don't invest in, in houses that are too old, because that, that means that the upkeep is just going to be more expensive. All right. So these are kind of the steps, and when we get to the table, I'm going to spend more time on that to get you with the main ones to bring it out. We've got the resources. Uh, one of the things you can do is if you like a property but you're not quite sure, uh, I've called a real, a real estate agent. If you go on Trulia or Zip, you, uh, Zip Skinny or City Data, a lot of times they'll pull up realtors have their ads for that area. So I just find a realtor in that area, call them up. I identify myself that as an investor and I buy mortgages. I don't say delinquent or anything like that. I said I buy mortgages and occasionally I end up with the property. And I'm looking at a property in your area, I was wondering if you'd help me out, give me an idea of what the value might be. If I end up with the property and you help me out, I will list it with you to resell. And you could so also I, ask those same people to do a drive-by. Sometimes they'll do it for free and take the picture. Sometimes they'll say, give me $30. So it's still cheaper than the $50 you'd have to pay a national service. Right. And we, we actually did this on one of the earlier notes when we were looking at notes. We had one that was in uh, Oklahoma, I think. Yep. Yeah. And it was hard determining the values on it. <coughs> and so we opted. I called up an agent, and the next day she drove by and said, boy, it's a mess. And she said, no, that, that street is all rental property and everything is just, you know, coming apart there. It's, it's not, it says, you know, it might be worth, you know, it might be worth $25,000. I think it was half of what? It was half of what it's, was listed on the tape yeah. that its value was. Right. So it's a quick way. It's inexpensive uh, to do it. You can hire, the, if you're in some areas, you're not going to get the help, so you're going to get a <coughs> service or you want something in 24 hours because you're really sold on this product but you just need some backup to, to pull the trigger. And you should, start, you should make that call the first day you make the bid because it's going to take a couple of days to do a bid, right, to get the bid in. And then you have an additional three days of due diligence um, to go over that note. So within those five days, they should get it done. But if you do it last minute, these people are going to blow you off. You have to really be on top of the... Brokers. Then you make the bid or get the bid? No, no, no. You're going to make a bid, right? It's going to. So we made a bid on, on Friday. We'll probably hear back on Tuesday. And then if we win it, we'll have another three days to do additional due diligence, which is basically order the O&E report. But, you know, if I'm going to talk to a broker, I'm going to do it at the very, very beginning. Friday. Yeah, because you never know how long this broker is going to take. And they know they're not going to make money on you, so they have no motivation to run to the house. And, then when you get it, then you would engage, you pay somebody to go get it. You win if, the bid. If we haven't, if we win the bid and we haven't gotten, we haven't got an agent to do it for free, then we'd pay the fifty bucks yeah. and have somebody do it within the next twenty-four hours. Yeah, just to make sure before we wire our money. Because we all know that Google, the day the house could be there, the house could burn down. Mm -hmm. So from that, and again by the date on the Google map, but we like to know for sure we got the property and it's, it's, it's a clean property. Yes. Yeah. Um, you make a bid. It's going through the process. You said three days to do your due diligence. No, two. Two. Hear back from them. Right? No, no. You hear back from them in probably usually one to one to two business days uh, on the bid. If the bid's accepted, then you have three days to do due diligence. And what if you want to back out? What's the risk? So you know, backing out. You have to have a good reason to back out. If you don't have a good reason to back out, that seller won't engage you anymore. Gotcha. They won't take you seriously, and they will kick you. I mean, I you know I sold for one of the bigger uh, you know funds out there that sells, and uh, if somebody BS me or backed out of something for no real good reason, I'm not talking to them again. It's just a waste of my time. I have hundreds of other people to talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, there's in this in this market, there's a lot more buyers than there is demand. Uh, not a lot more fires than there is product, I mean. 
So, you know, you if you honestly feel there's something wrong with the property and you've made a bid, tell the seller and just be like, well, you know, it came back, there's twenty thousand dollars in taxes. You didn't tell me that. Right. Right? I can't I can't buy that. I'd lose money. Right? The seller's always gonna try to come up with some way to get you to buy the note. But, you know, if you don't want to, just back out. Or, you know, if there's something wrong with the chain of title. For instance, we we bought we uh, put a bid on a note that we won and it came back and uh, it was actually bought by Aquin.